Well, good uh, morning. What a pleasure to be here. It's quite exciting for a scientist uh, to be here in a, in a, in a, in a, at an occasion like this, uh, in, a, in a forum like this, a venue like this, uh, trying to tell you a bit about our very, very young project on determining whether or not microplastics actually get into the fetal environment, and if they're in the fetal environment, do they actually cause effects there? So I'll take these few minutes just to introduce our project, a little bit of the background, why we suspect that microplastics could get into the fetal environment, how we approach our project, and some preliminary results. You'll see some important people in the project as we go along, um, but I wanted to start actually with showing this uh, important person uh, first. And this is my daughter. In this um, ultrasound, she was six months old, in, in my tummy, of course, and this, I, I remember this day very, very clearly still. It was 14 years ago. Uh, my husband and I were so excited to see uh, a baby already this, this big. It was the first ultrasound uh, um, that we, we had of, of, of a, a six-month-old baby. We could see her, we could, we could picture our child, and we could, we could hope and pray that she was healthy and that she would um, develop into a very healthy young woman, which she has, luckily. I am a toxicologist, so I have the, perhaps the, the disadvantage of knowing that um, in the uterus, during development, the fetus is extremely, extremely sensitive to exposure to chemicals. I've worked now for about 20 years with the uh, class of chemicals called the endocrine-disrupting chemicals. And uh, these are chemicals, different classes, that can disrupt hormone systems, that when, especially during development, during fetal development, when the timing of hormones is really, really important for the proper development of tissues and, and organs. So I've already known for a long time that, that chemicals in plastics, for example, bisphenols and phthalates, uh, when, they are, uh, when the exposure is during these sensitive periods of development, they can lead and they can play a role in disease later in life. So when thinking about microplastics, and I'm very new to the field of microplastics, I, of course, am asking the same questions that I asked already in the last 20 years. Are these microplastics making it to the, to the fetus? Uh, are the chemicals that are in the microplastics leaching? And what is the potential health risks? And really, we don't know yet, and I'm really, really excited that we have some funding to work on this important topic. So, this is the, the, the picture that we're seeing. Uh, this is the, the symbolic picture that the Plastic Soup Foundation has used to represent our, our meeting today. And it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a very a scary picture, right? It's, uh, it's a doomsday scenario where our children during development are not only swimming in fluid containing microplastics and the chemicals associated with them, but they're also actually made up of these chemicals. And of course, these pictures are an extension of what we've seen in wildlife, in marine wildlife, turtles, um, birds, that we know that there are plastics being taken up. But really, we do not know yet if microplastics actually reach the human uh, fetal environment and the human placenta. What do we know? And why is it that, that, that I, together with a fantastic group of researchers, actually hypothesize that these microplastics will make it uh, through the bloodstream um, and enter the placenta where the baby could be exposed. The reasons, there are actually two lines of evidence. The first line of evidence comes from what we've already heard this morning, that we know that air pollution uh, is made up of very, very tiny particles, uh, and that those particles can enter our bodies. In this really hallmark study that came out just a couple of weeks ago, uh, researchers have shown that air pollution, in particular, these little black carbon soot particles, uh, nanometer size, uh, are actually found in the placenta. So there's the proof of principle when it comes to air pollution particles that they do reach the placenta. We know also from animal studies that um, when we inject mice, pregnant mice, for example, with uh, polystyrene beads, uh, we inject them in this study only four hours after the injection of the pregnant mice, um, these fluorescent particles, fluorescent plastic particles, made it to the placenta, and not only were present in the placenta, 
But what you can see here are these little、uh, fluorescent、uh, beads showing up in the fetal brain, in the fetal liver. So animal studies are giving us indications that indeed our hunch may be right that these microplastics might make it. But I would like to re-emphasize re- that we really don't know yet for humans, and we really need to answer these particular questions. So we need to know:、uh, Do the microplastics reach the, the placenta and, and the amniotic fluid? So here you see the human fetal environment, very much simplified, with the baby in the in the in the uterus,、um, the placenta, which forms. The, the really, in, really interesting organ that's really temporary organ, only, produ- only formed during pregnancy, that gives the baby all of its nutrition,、uh, important for metabolism of steroids and other、uh, molecules, important for the elimination of waste out of the baby in, in, into the mother and, and out of the mother, and the amniotic fluid being that, that you know the water surrounding the baby. Really important for cushioning the baby,、uh, also for for metabolism,、um, elimination of waste products. We know that if a microplastic would enter the the amniotic fluid through the placenta, the baby would be directly exposed. The baby swallows that amniotic fluid constantly and pees it really re- out again. So we need to know:、um, is it in the placenta? Is it in the amniotic fluid? Because then we know there is real fetal exposure. And we also need to understand if those placentas, if those particles make it into the placenta, will they cause harm,、uh, and will the chemicals that are associated with them cause harm? So those are the main research questions in our project. We started about four months ago, so it's very early for us. What we did was we got together a, a very multidisciplinary team of scientists, and as, as Dick Fedhack said this morning, the only way to approach these complex questions is to get. People with different expertises together, working together. So what we have here is an, an extraordinary team. We have a, a pediatrician from the Dijklander Hospital in Horn,、uh, Gavin Tentuser. He is collecting, as we speak,、uh, collecting、uh, placentas and、uh, amniotic fluid samples from women who are delivering babies under his care.、Uh, he's providing those placenta and amniot- amniotic fluid samples to our chemists. We have different groups of chemists involved:、um, Maria Lamore and Heather Leslie from the FU University in Amsterdam, and Douglas Walker from the Icon School of Medical School in Mount Sinai in the U.S. Two, chemi- two chemistry groups using their own specific, sensitive methodologies to measure these microplastics in placenta. We have Dick Fetak giving us, providing us、um, the most environmentally relevant plastic particles. As you heard this morning. We need to be looking at the particles that、uh, we are exposed to as humans, and so Dick's group is taking different kinds of plastic particles and weathering them, and providing them to us, the toxicologists in Utrecht,、um, to look in placenta cell cultures if these really environmentally relevant particles、um, enter the placenta cells and may cause effects there. So just quickly, the, the chemistry that's involved.、Um, we're using these two different labs: one in the in the Netherlands, one in the U.S., each with their own specific expertise、um, to measure plastic plastic polymers、uh, in the placenta samples and the additives that are in the plas- placenta samples.、Uh, in addition to、uh, Raman spectroscopy and、uh, advanced microscopy, so we can compare methods. We can find out which method is the most sensitive.、Uh, To quantify these plastics, and we're still busy developing methods and collecting our samples. So I'm afraid I have no results yet. In our lab in Utrecht, thanks to some additional funding from Sonnenv, we've been able to team up with our imaging facility in our university. They have really the best mic- microscopes, the really high-power microscopes that we need to image these placenta cells. These are human placenta cells that we can culture on a, a petri dish. And we can expose them to different plastic particles, and we can look at if the placenta, human placenta cells, take up those those particles, and if they cause any da-、uh, damage or harm to the、uh, placenta. So this is a 3D image that just、uh, was created yesterday.、Uh, I've, I've got to explain it to you.、Uh, maybe I'll show it to you in a moment、uh, again. So those little pink balls are actually polystyrene 200 nanometer beads. That we have、um, added to these placenta cells in in a petri dish, and、um, we can this this way we've actually sh- been able to show that these placenta, sorry, these particles are inside the placenta cells. These are placenta cells. The yellow coloring shows the protein in the cells. 
The blue color is, is, the, is the nucleus of the cells. So if I, if I can maybe show it one more time, I don't know if it's going to work. I love this. Uh, this is really hot off the, hot off the, um, the press. Uh, students have been working all week to, to, to show that those little, watch them now, the little pink polystyrene beads get, take, are really inside the cells. They're not on the membranes, they're not on top of the cells. They're really taken up by the cells. So for us, this is really the most important first step in understanding, um, okay, so the particle gets into the cell, what, what happens to the cell afterwards? How does it react? And what can be the, the possible um, toxic effects of the particle and the chemicals associated with the particle? So really, to understand the risk of microplastics to the human placenta and the human fetal environment, we need to follow all of these steps. We have a year in order to understand something about the exposure and something about the hazard. It's a first step, um, and it's a really crucial in order to understand more about this potential risk. And if indeed this is a scenario that we could really see as a realistic scenario uh, if we continue to go on the way we are now. So let's do take care of the next uh, generation by continuing this research, by continuing what you're all doing. And I really wanted to thank uh, the team working uh, with me on this and to thank Sonam Bey in particular for funding this really high-risk uh, but really exciting research. Thank you very much.